I'm Alex, and this is Kevin, the lead developer on Speedify. So Kevin, what is Starlink? So Starlink is a new internet connection option that uses satellites. They orbit lower in the atmosphere, low Earth orbit satellites versus um, traditional satellite uses much higher orbits where the satellites are further away. So this allows you to have much lower latency and, and better speeds than traditional satellite connections. So yeah, SpaceX has deployed thousands of satellites that orbit the Earth. And they're constantly moving around in and out of range. This allows them to get great coverage around the globe. Versus traditional satellites, usually just, they just have a few satellites satellites positioned around the Earth that stay in geosynchronous, in geosynchronous orbit. Orbit. So they're always pointing at the same location. So while you can get better performance, there's some challenges to this because the satellites are constantly moving in and out of range of your dishes. So what kind of performance can you get with Starlink? So when things are working well, you can see 200, 300 megabits download. I mean, even there's some high performance dishes that can see even higher than that. Then upload. Kind of upload. Yeah, upload. I mean, it can vary based on what, what you're seeing, but you could see 10 to 50 megabits, you know, depending how well things are working. I've seen up to 50 megabits. Yeah, I've, I've seen 50 a couple yeah. of times online. So yeah, pretty good. And latency is usually pretty good. I mean, below 50 milliseconds when things are working well. So how do they keep the latency so low? Yeah, because the satellites are orbiting closer to the Earth, it's, you know, much less distance for the, the signal to travel and they're you know, they're able to beam it right back down to stations that are closer on the ground and keep the latency low. So yeah, I mean, as long as they're part of it, yeah. right? it's actually hitting a base station that's probably not that far from where you are now. It's going up and right back down. Right. I think some of these ones in geosynchronous orbit, there's one internet connection for America, probably in Texas somewhere. Wherever you're going, you're going all the way to Texas and back. I mean, if you're in Texas, it isn't so bad, but for everyone else, <laughs> that's pretty far distance. So what are you seeing? Is there any benefit to having more than one Starlink dish? So th there can be. So yeah, you can get combined speed, assuming there's enough bandwidth from the, the satellites, uh, you can get combined speeds from Starlink dishes to give you, uh, you know, better combined speeds. And then also it helps to fail over a little bit, you know, particularly if you can get the dishes positioned that they can be picking up different satellites, you know, maybe as one satellite's transitioning off of the first dish, it could be picking up a d another one on the second dish and you can kind of smooth over some of the transitions between them. Ideally, you would want them if you can get them further apart so that they're picking up different satellites, that, that's helpful. But yeah, some of these newer, higher performance dishes, they can track multiple satellites at once and, you know, be working on that handover. So as the satellites are going out of range, they're picking up a new one. So how close together can you get these dishes? So there's different models of the dishes. So it depends, you know, there's some of the residential ones, there's newer, higher performance ones, but in general, they need to be, you know, at least, you know, some of the newer high performance ones need to be at least a foot apart so they don't interfere with each other. So yeah, actually pretty close. That's yeah, pretty they could they could be, they could be pretty close, but you know, they could be, then there's a lot of chance that they're picking up the same satellite. So if you can get them further apart, you know, different ends of a building or different ends, some people use them on ships or boats. You can get one on the front of the boat, one on the back of the boat, where you have some more distance between them, that there's better chance of them picking up different satellites and maybe having some more performance benefit than if they're right next to each other. But even if they are right next to each other, you just need a little bit of separation so they don't conflict with each other, don't interfere with each other. So who would use this? So using multiple Starlinks, I mean, there's plenty of people that, you know, travel around and they get benefit of one Starlink, you know, when they're roaming around, they don't have other good internet options, but somebody that's maybe doesn't have other internet options, you know, maybe they can't get cellular connectivity by having the two Starlinks that might put them in a better position that, you know, as one of the Starlinks is dropping out, the other one can still be working or you can get more speed out of the, the two combined. So how can someone actually use two internet connections, right? I mean, a computer will only take one internet in, right? Right. So yeah, I mean, you could either have, you know, multi some devices on one internet connection and one on the other, or you have to manually switch them, or you can take advantage of something like Speedify that can bond your multiple internet connections together. So Speedify is a service that will make connections back to our servers over any of the internet connections you have, and we can seamlessly move the traffic between them or combine them to get more speed using what's called bonding to combine the connections. Before we get into how we've been changing Speedify to make it work better with Starlink, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more deep dives and live streams on connectivity technology. So what kind of changes did we make to Speedify to make it work better with Starlink? So we originally started testing with one Starlink and we had to make some different changes to some of our you know, congestion control algorithms, how much traffic will let onto a particular connection at once, and some of our failure detection to better work with Starlink. Because Starlink's so variable, you know, the latency can jump around a lot and can move in and out of range. Changes, it's more dynamic than a lot of other internet connections that we dealt with. So we had to make some changes to better make sure we're util fully utilizing the, the speeds of the Starlink and 
and better detection when it's going to fail and being able to switch over to other connections. And now we've started actually testing with multiple Starlink dishes, so being able to try to bond those together. And so we've you know made some further tweaks to some of our bonding algorithms of how we're splitting traffic between connections, making sure we're fully utilizing both of the Starlinks when they're available. And again, yeah, as, as one starts to drop out, maybe we should be able to shift traffic over the other one if the other one's still working. So yeah, we're continuing to tweak things and continuing to test with, with multiple Starlink connections to see how we can improve stuff even more. So how many Starlink dishes do we have right now? So we currently have three Starlink dishes. So we have one of the residential ones, and then we have two of the newer high-performance Starlink dishes. And so we've been testing with all of those, seeing what kind of performance we can get out of them. Are you seeing a noticeable difference with the new dishes over the older residential? Uh, yeah, the newer dishes, they seem, I, mean, I think they can track more satellites at once, and they seem to have you know better higher-priority traffic, better performance than the residential one. The residential one can be good too, but they seem more stable to higher performance ones in terms of the performance you get. Yeah, and it's interesting that they're just sort of thin wedges you put down. There isn't the, you know, the stock and the they don't move around anymore tracking. Right, yeah. The, the older ones had you know, motors, and they would try and orient them in the right way, and now they just kind of point up at a slight angle so that you know, there's differences in the different models and how they orient them. And what the angle is for is to let the water run off, All right. right? It's not to point at some point in the sky, it's to make sure water can drain. How have you been testing Speedify with the two Starlinks? So we've been working on doing different bonding scenarios. So, you know, combining at different points, trying to combine the connections with Speedify, test them in different configurations, but then also doing over time, longer running streams or longer running connections that, you know, as this, the Starlinks come in and out, allows us to make sure that Speedify is keeping the available bandwidth up, as well as having, as we mentioned, having other connections available that Speedify can fail over to if the, one of the Starlinks is, you know, decreasing its performance or drops out completely. It's rare for them to drop out completely. I think they, they've seemed like they've gotten better. They, they just kind of decrease the performance down. But There's yeah, a lot the, more satellites right. than even yeah. a few months ago, right? They, exactly. They launch hundreds at a time now. Yeah. But yeah, you can still see a decrease in performance at times and having that other connection to fail over to or to help it jump in and pick up the speed a little bit can be very helpful. You talked a little bit about using Speedify to combine two different Starlink satellite dishes. You know, there are other scenarios where you'd want to combine the Starlinks with other connections. Uh, definitely, yeah. I mean, because as I said, even if the Starlinks, you know, you can bond them together, it's still possible they could both drop out. So you probably don't want to depend fully on the Starlinks. If you have other options, you probably want at least some other connection to fall back on. But yeah, so if you have some sort of cellular connection in LTE, 5G, that could be a good addition to, to the Starlink. A lot of times you can see, you know, similar speeds. Sometimes some of these, you know, 5G home internets, the speeds can look pretty similar to Starlink. So you can also bond those in, or it's another option if, when the Starlinks are dropping in and out. But yeah, if you have some sort of dependence, where you are, if you have some sort of landline connection, DSL or cable or anything like that, those can also be good additions to the, the Starlink or you know, good backups. Yeah, so what I was doing was with my Starlink, I was using Speedify to bond it to my cell phone. Because most of the time, the Starlink, which I said is primary, you know, we'd use that so I'd get 200 down and 50 up when it was working well. But every couple hours, it drops to like one megabit. And you just switch over, use the phone for sometimes 15 seconds, one minute, three minutes, and then the satellite to go back to you. And so I ended up not using very much cellular at all because Speedify would use it as a secondary connection, but it just completely smoothed out my internet. No, nobody noticed anymore, right? If in the middle of the call, the, the Starlink went down. Yeah, yeah, definitely a great option to have another connection to help compensate and you know, not, not rely on Starlink solely if you have other options. Even the DSL. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. DSLs are so slow at upload, but it's better than nothing, right? Definitely. Now that you understand more about using multiple Starlinks with Speedify, check out our other video about Speedify's journey with Starlink because we explain what kind of changes we made to the app to make it work even better with Starlink.